In this video, I'm going to show you how to location enable your C++ for iOS applications. We'll use the T location sensor component, and we'll also use the T web browser component to display a Google map using the latitude and longitude that come from the GPS in your iOS device. So we'll say File New, FireMonkey Mobile Application C++ Builder. We'll start with a blank application. So the first component we'll add is we'll add a T toolbar to our application. And to the toolbar, we'll add a label. And we'll change the text of this label to be uh, location map app C++. And then we'll align the label to the client area, of, in this case, to the, of the toolbar. And we'll set the text align property to center the text at the top. Then we'll add a list box and we'll align this list box to the top of our client area. In this list box we're going to place several list box items to contain uh, the user interface of our application and then in the lower part of the application we'll put the T web browser component. So why don't we add that right now. So here's the T web browser component. We want it to be parented to the form and we'll align it to the rest of the client area. So it, it'll take up the rest of the space uh, in our application. Now in the list box, we'll add three items. We can right mouse click and say add an item, just a list box item, add a second list box item, and a third list box item. The first list box item is going to contain a couple things. First, it has a text property, so we can put some text in here, and this is going to be our location sensor. And inside of this list box item, we'll also add a T-switch component. And the T-switch component can be used to turn on and off the location sensor to get us the latitude and longitude. We'll align this to the right side of the list box item. Let's add a T-location sensor component. Uh, C++ Builder for iOS comes with three pre-built sensor components, location sensor, motion sensor, and orientation sensor. We're just going to use the location sensor. We can place it somewhere. It has a couple of properties, the accuracy of the location, uh, distance, which is the number of meters that changes, then we'll get a location change event firing. In the second list box item, we'll put the latitude that comes back from the location sensor. We'll set the text here to be latitude, and then this next one to longitude. Now the default style of each of these list boxes is going to be list box item, no detail, no other information. We're just going to use the text property. We can make this list box a little smaller. And then again, notice that the T web browser component, which is aligned to the rest of the client area, will grow to fit the rest of the space. So why don't we use the T-switch component and we'll hook its on switch event. So as we switch it, and here we just want to activate or deactivate the location sensor component. We'll say location sensor one active is going to be equal to the switch one is checked property. So that way if the switch is switched, it is checked will be true and we'll set the location sensors active property to true. If we turn the switch off, slide it to the left, then the location sensor active property will be false and it will deactivate the location sensor. And we'll save this project. I'm going to call it my location app. Next thing we want to do is when the location sensor gets an on location changed event, then we want to do something with the latitude and longitude we get. So this is the event handler for the location sensor location change event. And we're past uh, two parameters that we need to use. One is the location coordinates of the old location, and that'll give us two doubles or two floating point numbers. And then we also get the new location. So the first thing we want to do 
is say list box item two its text property is going to be equal to list box item two text and we'll use sprint f and we'll pass the string latitude with a percent f and then we'll pass the latitude value that we're passed as a parameter to display the latitude in the list box items text property and also we want to go to list box item 3 its text property we'll do the same thing list box item 3 text dot sprintf we're going to put the string longitude and the floating point value and pass the longitude of the new location uh, into that item the last thing we want to do is use the T-Web Browser component to use Google Maps through the Internet to display the map location of where we are. Through that, we'll create a string, and we'll add to it uh, the string that goes to Google Maps, passing it two floating point values, and having the output be embedded inside of our T-Web Browser area passing it the latitude and longitude of the new locations. Let's make sure we're connected to our device. Okay, we're connected via a Macintosh. And let's compile and run this application. And then our application icon appears, My Location App. Here comes the splash screen. And now we have the user interface of our application. We'll turn the switch on. Since it's trying to get the current location, iOS is asking the user, is it OK to use the current location in this My Location app? I'll say OK. We get the latitude and longitude. And then in the T-Web browser area, coming from Google Maps, we get the location of where I am right now. I'm here in Houston getting ready for our XZ5 lunch event tomorrow. And that's how easy it is to use C++ Builder for iOS and the location sensor component to location enable your iOS applications.